One, two, make on, make on. Camera on. Boom. Hello, everybody. How are you? Who's that guy? It's been a while, isn't it? Yeah, it's me to say. Andy McGibbon, host of Politics, Culture and Some Other Shit. Part-time, very part-time these days. I just don't have the time. I'm too busy. It's, about, it's a time management thing with me. But I'm getting there. I'm trying to figure it out. Also went through a little bit of an existential crisis with regards to what I was doing and what I'm going to talk about and all that sort of stuff. I don't want to just be another waffler, another talking head or whatever. You know, it's not my bag. Um, truth, truth and honesty, that's where I, I am in my soul. And sometimes it's not always easy to do that. But... Uh, I do try, you know, but fuck it, I'm going to push on, I think I have an idea with what it is that I'm doing, yeah, but I'll get there, but anyway, like, share, subscribe, uh, thank you to all my patrons um, who haven't abandoned me, because I haven't been doing very little this past little while, I will try and make it up to you, um, as you know, you can go onto my patron and uh, support the podcast, for a pound a month, that's it, that's the only tier there is, uh, and I do I do appreciate it, or I sincerely do, it does make a difference, um, so, but I thank you for not, I haven't, I've come, maybe five or six weeks since I've done a podcast, and you're still sitting there, and you have every right to just go fuck this, but you didn't, and you're not, so thank you, you're not even messaging me to complain, which is nuts, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a way that's not giving you a window that's not opening up a window for you to complain so let's do this what are we going to talk about today we're going to talk we're going to talk more general i'm going to go more general we're going to talk about the shape of the world as it is where we are and why we're here and things like that going to be a little bit more existential a little bit more you know why the world is the shape that it is and what we're looking at as a society as a global community uh, yeah so let's get into it we're going to do it um, it's really nice. Yo, yeah, I've been away I've been away with the band as well been away f- was away in Germany for a while touring it was great uh, brilliant great time over there uh, great people, great gigs, had a lovely time, beautiful weather. Um, came home and collapsed, literally collapsed on the ba- in the bedroom floor, exhausted. Um, had to go to hospital and all that, but I'm okay. There's nothing wrong with me. I was just tired. But I do that. I've got a. Oh, I've just noticed there's a horrible stain on my t-shirt. Look at that. Ah, bollocks. Um, I've got a great capacity for stamina and I just keep going. I've always I've done that with my, my with my sports and my athletics throughout my life. Uh, I, do, I don't know when to physically quit. And which is great when you're racing. When you're not racing, it's not so good because it means that you you do, you ignore the signs of your body telling you that you need to take a break, you need to slow down. And you know, at the end of the day, I'm not a young man anymore. I'm, you know, a man of a certain age. And uh, I sort of get on sometimes like I'm not. And I need to not be doing that. So I had to go to the hospital and get checked out. And I'm fine. There's nothing wrong with me. Just exhausting. That's all it was. So there, there we go. Thought I'd share that with you. That's one of the other reasons why I've, uh, it's actually one of the reasons why I'm actually got out to do this podcast, because we're supposed to go and work out. In my head, I'm going, I'm going to go and work out. And I didn't. I went, no, you're going to go and do a podcast. So there we go. So, and then another thing as well, today, uh, up Armagh, Ardwaha Abu, um, Armagh play in the quarterfinal of the All-Ireland against uh, our Ulster neighbours, Monaghan. And uh, I'm going to go in shortly after after I'm finished here and watch the the first quarter final, which is uh, 
Tyrone versus Kerry, which should be a great match. I'm glad we didn't draw Tyrone or Kerry, to be honest. Um, so I think we should we should do okay against Monaghan, although it depends which our man team turns up. N- not that not that Monaghan can't beat us; they fucking can. But, uh, they have beaten us already this year, but um, we'll see. So yeah, I'm gonna go around to the Woodville, have a pint, sit with my buddies, see what happens. So let's get to it. Podcast. We're, so. One of the things I wanted to talk to you about was the general state of the world. And one of the th- I, I sort of touched upon this in the last podcast that we did. And it was a, as cynical as I am myself, and I'm sure most of you guys are too, I am struggling with to process the level of male- 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 malevolence and manipulation that goes on. Now, we know there's a deep state. We know that there's an establishment. We know that there's an economic system that is geared against working class interests. We know this. But one of the things that I think I've been a trap that I've fallen into I was raised in a time, now do get me wrong, I'm talking, not talking about in the north of Ireland, I'm talking about in general, in the western world, obviously we're talking West, Western Europe and United States and what's generally considered to be the West, Australia, United States, Western Europe, and Japan actually. So we, we were raised in a time where it was, where capitalists, surely from the 60s, the 50s and 60s, I would have been raised in the shadow of that, in the echo of the 50s and the 60s. I was born in the 70s, and then by the time the 80s came about, neoliberal capitalism was well and truly a part of uh, the establishment. So I kind of never really got the best of it, but I lived under the shadow of it, under the echo of it. The idea that even back then, those capitalists understood that they had to leave something on the table for the worker, for the majority, for the working class. They got it. They, they sort of understood that the promise of capitalism, which is a lie, by the way, but the promise, the lie that they tell you is that if you work hard, you will be able to blah, 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 do all these things. And as long as they left so much on the table... That remained the possible. Not the truth, but possible. There's a difference, right? But we're now living in a, in a time when the capitalists back then that understood that, the post-war generation of capitalists, they're gone. And that doesn't... That, just that, that idea... That lie, that promise that is a lie, is well and truly dead. It's gone. Must I'll put the other screen on before we get the thing. It's well and truly gone. If it ever existed, it existed for a while after the war, World War Two, the post-war decades, cut two decades. But we can we know from economics, we know that when. It was the early 70s and started in the US and then by the time it got to the 80s in UK, Europe, all started to come under this. Um, the, 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 the living standards of the working class leveled out and then went into decline and have been in decline ever since the late 60s, early 70s. We're now living in a generation so there's in, under a system where the the establishment, the capitalists, are so greedy. That they've left nothing on the table. They've left nothing on the plate. There's no meat left on the bone for anyone other than themselves. To the extent that we're now looking at... Soon there's going to be the world's first trillionaire. 
We've now got things like celebrity billionaires. A billion being such an extraordinary amount, such a, such an extraordinary extraordinarily high number that you and I literally cannot process it in our brains. We can't. There's nothing you can. You, we've become comfortable with the idea of it because we've heard it and we we understand it's been said, and we can identify individuals that are billionaires, even to the point where we call them celebrity billionaires. Um, isn't like Kim Kardashian and uh, what do you call your woman? This the talk show Oprah Winfrey. And then even beyond, you've got people like Elon Musk, etc., etc. And I suppose you could call Jeff Bezos a celebrity to to an extent as well. So we've so that's how we ad, so we play this trick in our head because we can identify a person that is this thing. We think we can process that number. That is a number. We can't. You and I. There's no capacity for us to do this. We cannot do it. It's that big a number. And there are that many of these people and that number is so big that they are literally between them hoovering up all the wealth that is generated by your and my labour. Which is what it is. I had this discussion. Again, I don't argue with people on Twitter. I try to talk to them. If they want to get cunty, they can. And often they do. But the guy was saying about how capitalism versus social and socialism is evil and all that sort of stuff. And I sort of tried was trying to explain to him, but you're not a capitalist. You don't own your car. A capitalist is a person that owns capital. What is capital? Property, stocks, shares, businesses. And the capital generates income, and that's how they make their living. So you go to work for this person, they get paid. And they have enough of this going on that they become ultra wealthy. So they're the capitalists. And whenever you see people that don't even own their own car, saying that they're a capitalist, It makes me laugh. It actually angers me, but it also shows you. It it also shows you the extent of the propaganda that has been drip fed in this for decades and decades and decades, all our lives. The only version of socialism possible is Soviet communism, and capitalism will save us, give us opportunity, and choice. Now. Choice, that's another thing. There, choice is an illusion under capitalism. So we've come to believe that choice is freedom. But whenever we say choice, we mean choice of washing powder in the supermarket or choice of toothpaste or 20 different types of dog food. You look down the supermarket aisle, you've got 40 different washing powders, 35 different toothpastes, 20 different dog foods, 14 different types of beans. And most of the food you can buy is bad for you. Most of the choice is illusionary. There is no choice. It's just washing powder. It does the same thing. It's been doing the same thing since they invented it in the 1920s or wherever, whenever. It's more or less the same. So we have that illusion of choice. But what we don't have choice of is political parties. But you do. You've got you've got the Green Party and the Labour Party and the Conservatives and in Ireland you've got Fianna Gael and Fianna Fáil and, and da, 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 da. but all these parties are all serving the same master. It doesn't matter who you vote for; they all end up doing the same thing. So where's the choice? It's an illusion. It's like your the twenty different loaves of bread. All of which are very bad for you. But you've got a choice. So so you you then assume that choice is, is good and not having a choice is bad. So 
Now you've got celebrity billionaires, an illusion of choice. Everything that you do choose is bad for you, bad for the environment. It's been made under... Uh, in bad, bad for the environment, extreme cruelty to our beautiful animals that we, that live on the share this life and this planet with us. And I'm not, I'm not a vegan or a vegetarian or anything. Which I'd like to be actually, but you know. But we we have this illusion of choice, and we've been told that capitalism gives us this choice. But no matter which political party you vote for, they all end up doing the same thing. But then that's the illu- But we have this illusion of choice. You've got this party who are uh, horrible right wing, and this party who are left wing, or this party who are centrists. But no matter what they who gets elected, they all go into power, and they all serve capital. They serve the donors. They serve the lobbyists, which is just another word for bribery. It's legalised bribery. It's how the establishment has legalised bribery. The very idea that a company or an individual can give a politician money and they expect nothing in return is, quite frankly, childish. It is childish. And I can't believe that it's a thing that exists and that it can be thought of as anything other than childish. It's naive. In America, you've lobbying in extremists. Massive corporations funding both parties. Then, you know what it said there, by the way? Both parties. You've got two parties. You have other parties, but they haven't a fucking shot. They haven't a chance. I'm going to talk about that in a sec. Um, so, these corporations fund both parties. So, it doesn't matter who gets in, the corporation wins. Because the corporation is doing, it's buying favour. It's funding the parties. It's funding the politicians. And then, in the West, we criticise places like China because they have one party. They have Communist Party. But what's the difference? If you've got two parties who are pretending an illusion of choice but go into government and enact policies the equivalent to or worse than the previous the party that went before them, then you could say the best thing you're ever going to do when you vote is vote for the least worst. Do you understand? You're only ever voting for the least worst. And then you criticise the likes of China because they have one party. They don't have the choice. But you have a choice, but so what? You have a choice of different types of bread. They're all shit. You have a types of diff- choice of different types of washing powder. They all do the same thing. Like the parties. And this is what capitalism does through its marketing department. And that's what that is. Marketing is, as you know, Bill Hicks told us, you know, he says, if you've ever worked in marketing, go shoot yourself. Because you're pure evil. Because that's what marketing is. It tell. Imagine a world where there was no such thing as advertising. What toothpaste would you buy? Would it affect your choice? Think about it. There was, there was no like, advertising didn't exist. Think about it. The changes that would just instantly come into play because of that one industry doesn't exist you know it's it's amazing it's just a little mind experiment a little thought experiment try it it's it's bizarre I'll take you down a bizarre uh, route because it's actually very difficult to do 
because you've never experienced it, neither have I. So you have to try and envisage a world, and then you, you you know it's not just about what you'll see on the shelves; it's about how your society is structured. You take away marketing, society is different. It looks different, feels different, behaves different. So. When, this past while, as I said at the beginning, I've come to be, I've come to a new level of understanding of how badly manipulated we are. Now, I know we are manipulated. I understand it, but I think I've come to a new level of cynicism. I'm not no. I don't, I'm not going to call it cynicism because that makes it sound like I'm in a bad mood or in a temper about it or something like that. It's just a new under, a new level of understanding of where we are as a society, as a, as a planet. And it kind of took me by surprise a little bit. I didn't really quite understand just how bad it was. I understood, as I, as I spoke on a previous podcast, the Iraq war was the thing that I, I've now identified going backwards. That was the thing that changed everything. And one of the things that's connected to that is that it's clear now that since then we are living in an age of uh, where no one is, um, oh God, what's the word? Uh, respon- an age of no re- zero responsibility. No one is, is responsible for the choices that they make. You are if you drive a bus, you do something wrong, you are. But when it co- above you, no one's responsible. Despite, and the higher you go, and the more serious the decisions that you make are, the less responsibility you seem to bear. So long as the decisions that you're making serve capital, serve the establishment. We're now in a situation where World War Three is being deliberately provoked by a clearly out of control United States establishment. And for one reason and one reason only, so the greediest creatures that have ever breathed can continue to enrich themselves. An entire generation of Ukrainian working class, fighting age and beyond, men are being massacred. They're being thrown into a meat grinder. Russia bears its own responsibility for what it's doing, but again, I'm going. To, I've told you this at the start. I'm trying. I want to try and be brave about this now. I do have Ukrainian for Ukrainian friends from Ukrainian um, extraction. Let me say that. A couple of very close ones, and. I kind of been shying off saying about. I've said a few things. It, it, Ukraine is being used by the United States and NATO in order to provide hollow out tax coffers. This is what Julian Assange has taught us, has told us, has, has shown us through his, his WikiLeaks, and for which they're trying to kill him for doing so. It's not about winning a war. It's about creating further wars. And America has discovered a new tactic, which is to fight proxy wars, in which they're not even fighting them. They're getting other people to fight them. And for some reason, the Ukrainian people, the Ukrainian establishment, the Ukrainian the country of Ukraine, is prepared, and it hates Russia so much, it's prepared to destroy an entire generation. You can't lose 150,000, which is what you're looking at now in Ukraine, Men out of a, a stratos of your demograph of your demographics, that entire stratos is gone, forever. Ukraine's fucked. These are the the fathers of the future. These people aren't making babies. There's going to be population collapse. This con- and now that country has been handed over to the American hedge funds, the Black Rocks and the Black Waters, who are the most evil corporations. I mean, you think. Amazon is bad. These are the sure. These are the people that own Amazon, 
and everything else. Every evil corporation in the world. So this is, we've got an established, and, and, and again, and then we know then since then that certain people recognizing the folly of all of this tr try to introducing the words like peace talks and ceasefires into the conversation are being called Putin puppets and da 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 da, da all that sort of stuff. People like Erdogan, President Erdogan of Turkey, uh, Claire Daly, the Irish uh, MEP, Mick Wallace again, and a few, one or two others, people like Lukashenko. And these are politicians at the political level who I have no... We are not on the same side of, of politics. But you're not hearing it from anyone else. You're not hearing it from the, the mainstream left. The mainstream left have no voice on mainstream media. In the US, you've got the progress, what do they call them, the Justice Democrats, the AOCs and all those. Those people are all frauds. Bernie Sanders, fraud. Complete frauds. I will give Bernie Sanders credit for one thing. Introducing the idea and the word socialism into the American, um, into the American dialogue, public dialogue. He's done that. I'll give him credit for that. But he hasn't backed up anything he's ever said. He used to start his speeches with, or it sounds like you're ready for a revolution. Well, he should have followed it up with, I'm not, because he didn't back it up. He ended up backing Hillary Clinton straight away as soon as he got fucking cheated out of his uh, election run in 20, what was it, 2012, 2016, something like that. 2016? Yeah, 2016. And then, now he's back Joe Biden before anyone else has even come into the presidential race. Again, we'll get to that in a sec. So, and then in the United Kingdom, you've got um, people like Jeremy Corbyn, pushed out to the margins, kicked out of the Labour Party. People like George Galloway, who, despite what you think of him, I understand that he's controversial for some. I actually happen to like him. Don't agree with everything he says. I don't agree with everything anybody says. But I, I like him and I appreciate him for being there and for at least fighting. Pushed out to the margins. Kicked out of the Labour Party and pushed out to the margins under this fake anti-Semitism bullshit. Here in, in Ireland, uh, well, we, I very rarely, I, I don't talk about Northern Irish politics much anymore. There isn't any. You know what it is. It's stupid. Uh, but in, in, in the Republic of Ireland, you've got Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael and now they're pushing to join NATO. Ireland is neutral. And now we're being corralled into joining NATO, which is nothing more than a terrorist organization. Show me something that NATO has done that's good. It has done nothing that's good. So, to widen out the net, now BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, uh, South Africa is now BRICS plus there are other countries joining it and now there are 32 other countries that have applied to join BRICS because BRICS is setting itself up with an alternative currency to the US dollar and this is going to put US hegemony under extreme pressure Janet Yellen who is the head of the US Treasury was asked in an interview the other week what will happen if China just dumps its 800 plus billion dollars of American treasury bonds onto the open market? She says, we haven't even thought about that. Now, America is currently stoking a war with China over Taiwan. They are prodding the Chinese dragon. Chinese, thank God, have no interests, it seems, in fighting a war and are very much isolationists. They want to stay on their and just look after their own shit and that's it. The Belt and Road Initiative is them reaching out into the world where they can make investments and help people and all and help themselves and help people do certain things. The US is stoking China into a war over Taiwan 
And the head of the US Treasury hasn't even wargamed what would happen if China abandons its US Treasury bonds, which would sink the US. They've got that many of them. Would, would, would sink the economy. And they, they're that arrogant. They haven't even discussed what would happen if China did that. Now, if you went to war, if China went to war with the US, you would think that would be the first thing they'd do. Before a shot was fired, they just dump them, dump their bonds. Boom, goes the economy. BRICS is an equivalent of that. This new currency that's starting in September. They're starting a BRICS currency. There are countries queuing up to join it. When I put this on Twitter, I get shit all over. I get abuse. Blah, 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 blah. You're full of shit. You're a Putin puppet. Blah, 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 blah. Of the countries that are queuing up to join the new BRICS, Saudi Arabia is one of them. Saudi Arabia is the is the the key to the world's oil production. OPEC. This is not good news. European Union is being hollowed out by the US because I think that the US has lost control of South America, its own backyard, as it's always put it, through the um, the Monroe Doctrine. And now Europe is let itself, let itself become the new South America and the US is just going to hollow it out in order to... to, to, to to um, under underpin its own economy. That's what the blowing up of the Nord Stream 2 pipeline was about. It's gotten so reckless, the Ukrainians blew up the dam that was in uh, what was was in the Crimea. That was put in the, that that provided the water supply to the upriver nuclear power plant. That nuclear power plant needs that water for its cooling, and now that nuclear power plant is unstable. This is how reckless this whole situation has gotten. You're talking about nuclear reactors melting down in mainland Europe again. But this time, deliberately, and then it, and then on on mainstream news, who who's the bl- they blamed Russia for Nord Stream, they blamed R- Russia for the dam, they blamed Russia for the drone attacks on on the Kremlin, they, and every single time, weeks later, a day, well, at the time you just you just know it's bullshit. So this is the this is the state of the world that we're in today, and I think that it's down to an extreme state of greed that we're barreling towards a tunnel. I always said this in my op when the end comes, the end comes fast and it seems to be speeding up and up and up and up and up. And no one seems to be able to just put the brakes on and go, whoa, 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 we need to stop. Can we just stop for one second and look at what we're doing? We do not need to be starting a war with China. We do not need to be starting a war with Russia. We don't need to hollow out the industrial base of Europe in order to... But this is what we're doing. And we seem to be... The European one always blows my mind because we seem to be doing it with the connivance and the blessing and at the behest, at the behest of the Americans, with the blessing of the Europeans. That they cannot see the political people I'm talking about. They cannot see what the US has in store for Europe is beyond belief to me if we're looking at if, if you want to take a look at France today France is on fire the tour of tour de France starts today I'm going to be very interested to see how that's going to finish because the news reports that I see from alternative news sources they're not on the BBC they're not on Sky they're not on Channel 4 alternative news sources they're pe- Marseille they're breaking into police stations raiding the armory and shooting cops in the street. So, where does this all come from? Right back to the start. When the greedy 
capitalist class will not leave enough on the plate for the rest of us. And that was always the thing. That was why working class people would always have described themselves as being capitalists, despite owning no capital. They didn't understand, first of all, the the rules of economics, of the, the, the economic system called capitalism. But they would have defended it because they did well enough under it. We're not there now. Those days are done. They're gone. And it's going to get, it's going to ramp up. And it's going to ramp up for the next year based on one thing and one thing only. The US presidential election is 2024. And the runners and riders have been announced. And this is what we're going to take a look at. And this matters to us. Most of the people watching this, listening to this, will uh, be affected by this. Most of the world will be affected by this. Because depend, depending on who perseveres and the type of language used and the promises that are made and then kept will determine whether we go to war with China, whether we go to war. And I say we, it's not me and you. It's them, but it'll be us. It's, we'll pay for it, and our sons and daughters will do the fighting and do the dying. Collective R. Yeah? So, let's do this. A couple of things. So we're going to take a little look at the... The U.S. presidential election. Now, let me see if I can get the... Uh, there we go. So there's the the runners and the writers. This is from the New York Times, updated June 22, 2023. Just a couple of days ago. So, for those of you listening... And by the way, this is a video. It's going to be uploaded to, pod, uh, uploaded to YouTube. You can go and watch this, of course. So, there we go. So... President, the Democrats, the Democrats have got three contenders so far. More could announce soon. President Biden, the current incumbent, a woman called Marianne Williamson, and this guy here, RFK Jr., Robert F. Kennedy Jr., the son of Robert F. Kennedy, who was assassinated. Um, Brother of... JFK, the man who would have been president um, only for his opposition to the organised crime and the CIA, etc., etc. Um, and they killed him for it. In the Republican um, side of it, the main contender is Trump. A woman called Nikki Haley. Now, she fascinates me. She was the U.S. ambassador to the United Nations. And I'll see if I can find it. Nikki Haley. You'll, you won't believe this. She comes from... There she is. Governor of South Carolina. She comes from Indian extraction. So her full knee, Randhawa. So her full name is not Nikki or Nick, Nick, Nicola. Her name is Nick or Nima Nimarata Rand Hawa, and she comes from Sikh parents from Punjab, India. Born in the U.S. in South Carolina. Now she fascinates me. She, she is a monster. She is a bona fide horror show, and. I, I am, it is, whenever I see Irish-American names at the top of American politics, of which there are many, and they are just ghoulish, and I see their name like O'Reilly or Murphy or whatever, I go, oh my God, it's, it's embarrassing to me, I feel a personal sense of shame. And I kind of have a little bit of the same, uh, but with, when it comes to people from, uh, you know, people of African extraction, black people, or people of um, Asian extraction, I have a bit of a fascination. There's a little bit of mawkishness. 
So in the UK, you've got the, you know, Suella Bravermans and people like that. And they're just, they're worse than their white counterpart. The, the white people couldn't get away with it. But she's, she, she's another case altogether because she doesn't look, at first glance, Indian. She looks white. And she's completely abandoned any Indian outward presentation with her name being Nikki Healy. Now, I didn't know this. I've been aware of this woman for many years. I only found out this year that she was in, of Indian extent. Now, it doesn't matter. She's still a dick, still a monster. But it just it's just interesting to me that they become... The, the people of... What's the word? I'm trying not to sound like an awful racist. Like Of ethnic extraction almost become worse than the white people. I think is it is it is there a mental thing where they're trying to show that they're they're part of the team and part of the club? It's not because Suwala Braverman is getting away with things that no white man could ever do. There's no doubt about it. So yeah. So onwards the guy next to so the Republicans the the, the, the field in the Republican Party is uh chocked full. So this guy, Ramos Warney, w- w- Ramos Warmy. Now he's another uh, Asian-looking dude. So it's interesting. Uh, this guy Hutchinson, another guy Elder, another guy Scott. I don't, I don't know who these people are. DeSantis. Now he's the big one. He's the main challenger to Trump, right? He's the governor of Florida. Uh, Mike Pence, who was Trump's vice president, remember him? Christian real. Really super Christian guy. Uh, Christie, Chris Christie, he's the either ex-governor or governor of New Jersey, I think. And he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a bit of a joke figure guy. Uh, Bergam, don't know who he is. Suarez, I think I've heard of him. And Heard, I don't know. So the, the big names in there are Trump and DeSantis. Then the B team would be the Nikki Haley's, the Mike Pence, and the Chris Christie's. And I think Suarez is, is is some bit of a name. I'm not sure. So, uh, other Republicans considering a run down here is Rick Scott. I think he's something to do with Florida as well. And then, just before we move on to third party candidates, um, the Democrats, there was also the governor of California, whose name, again, escapes me. Um, he is widely thought to be considering a run. Um, he'd probably do very well, despite the fact that he's run California into the ground. California, by all accounts, is a bit of a disaster at the moment. So the, so the third party candidate, and this is the person that I like, is a guy called Cornell West. He's running. So, I'm going to play you his announcement video. It's fucking brilliant. Right? So, here we go. I'm going to read this article from the New York Times before we push on. I'm going to show you Cornell West's video. It's great. you love it. So, four years after a historically large number of candidates ran for president, the field for the 2024 campaign is getting crowded once more. Even as it is headlined by the same two aging men who faced off in 2020, President Biden and President Trump. Now, it has to be said, the people who are running in the presidential election are old. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. But in President Biden's case, it's a fucking ridiculous thing. This man is clearly not well. And mentally struggling sincerely I wish him peace and love and understanding and all the rest of it well I don't really because he's a fucking horrible monster he's a criminal but he's not all there and think about this this is about this choice that capitalism promises us under these two parties that are controlled by capital now this is interesting to me, and I hope it is to you too, but it's no different in our country, it's no different in the Republic of Ireland. 
Fianna Gael, Fianna Fáil have been running this country for nearly 100 years. What's the fucking difference? Yeah, they, they generally will have a piss and match around the margins. But when it comes to the meat and potatoes, they're all the same. In the north of Ireland, we had the Unionist Party. It was a one-party eth- ethno-state for a long time. The Democratic Unionist Party came along. And they were even worse. So it was a case of, you were voting for less worse. It's a bit different here in the north. We've got many parties now. But it is it is going down that path of the same... The same... But it, we're, 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 we're going to a two-party state in the north at the minute. To, the DUP on one side and Sinn Féin on the other. But anyway, I'll, I'll push on. Back to the article. A dozen Republicans have already entered the race. And additional, and additional candidates must still join them, creating a fractured field that could prevent voters who oppose Trump from coalescing around a single alternative, just as it did in 2016. So... With the Republican Party being so jam-packed, what they're saying is, with there being so many candidates and so many choices, there might, it might just stop people from just focusing on not voting for Donald Trump. But for me, that is a nonsense, because it's, it's not that they won't vote for Donald Trump. People will vote for Donald Trump. Because, and if you're a lefty, and I'm a lefty, you're not going to like this, we would be better off if Trump had won the last election. The world I'm talking about. And I do believe the American people as well. When it comes to least bad alternative, Trump was least bad compared to Biden. Mm, really? Uh-huh. So, on the Democratic side, Mr. Biden has drawn only a couple of long-shot challengers. Now... You gotta remember, this is New York Times. This is the, the 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 paper of record. These people, these papers, are all in one hundred percent up to the fucking throat for the Democratic establishment candidate, which is Biden. Right. So when they say Mr. Biden has only drawn a couple of long shot challengers, RFK Jr is not a long shot challenger. RFK Jr., I think he's currently polling at something like 20%. And he's rising. Now, I'll skip on down here. So the, the, here's the, um, the runners and riders, uh, a, a brief oversight. Uh, the President Biden has begun a concerted campaign to claim credit for an economic revival in America, but continuing inflation and high interest rates could overshadow his message. Now, that's fucking ridiculous. That is ridi- To claim credit for an economic revival in America, these people, what they call an economic revival is Wall Street is doing good. But Wall Street doesn't reflect what's happening on Main Street. That's his problem. They're focused on the Wall Street and they need to be focused on Main Street. 600,000 people in the USA are homeless right now. Many of them working. Uh, Onwards, the unexpected polling strength of Robert Kennedy, an anti-vaccine activist with a celebrated Democratic lineage, points to Biden's weaknesses. Now, couple of points. Robert Kennedy is not anti-vaccine. I've listened to him talking. What he says is he questions the efficacy of all vaccines and in the US you are man- as a, chi- a child is mandated something like 72 vaccines over the course of their schooling 72 not single one of these vaccines has ever been it is is um is is tested so if you introduce a new medicine into society it has to go through a rigorous 10 year process vaccines don't get that 
So he points to certain things. He said, you know, vaccines can be good in certain instances. But in all instances, they're not good and there's too many of them. And they create a weakness in your immune system. So he's got a, he's written a book about it. And he, the people that are criticising them, he's, they, they, he's offering to, to, to debate them. And they won't fight, they won't argue with them. So... You'll, you'll hear that more and more as time goes on, that as it gets closer and closer and closer to the, to, to Poland Day, anti-vaccine, anti-vaccine, ad, ant, ant, uh, he's an anti-vaccine advocate. Now. He's not. He's got many, many issues with, and to be perfectly frank, 72, va- if someone wanted to put 72, va- I mean, what is that, like three a year into my child? I would be, there'd be questions being asked. I would be asking questions. That seems mental to me. It seems like a lot. And I'm not anti-vaccine. I'm not anti-vax. I'm just, I'm not. I got, I'm vaccinated. I got the, the, the COVID vaccine. I got all that. I don't know if I'll get it again, though. But anyway, we'll move on. The GOP field. Actually, I'm going to just stray, or just, just real brief. One of the reasons that we've come to mistrust the establishment such as it is. And it's one of the things, as I said, from the Iraq war going forward to today, we now know for a fact what's been going on with the COVID vaccine has been, well, I'll be generous in saying uh, not quite as open and honest as true and truthful as we would have hoped. And not just that they said certain things, but they made mistakes. It's not that. They fucking outright lied about so many things. And a lot of people are now coming to this realisation, such as I am, such as myself. And I'm starting to realise that the establishment did certain things deliberately in order to serve capital, to provide, to hollow out more tax money into the coffers of these enormous multinational conglomerates the giant businesses that own politicians and you once you start to map all this together you, it, it makes it it makes you cynical it, and I think it makes you cynical to make in, in the making of you cynical is a good thing it protects you and it makes you ask questions so then whenever people like this come up out of society Robert Kennedy and he gets labelled an anti-vaccine activist that's the nicest way that they can put it um, you, you're then left going well mm, right is he There's, I maybe wouldn't like to have 72 vaccines put in me 72 Back in the 1960s in the US, something like one in 10,000 children were had were autistic. And I know the link between vaccines and autism is controversial. But in the US uh, now, it's one in 10. I mean, that's, you could say, well, maybe it wasn't diagnosed back then. That's true. That's not what he says. But anyway... I digress. I've gone off on a tangent, as is my want. I'm coming back to the article again. So that's the the Democratic field. The GOP field, the Grand Old Party, which is the Republicans. The helicopter that Rover, uh, Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida used for a photo op at the southern border of Texas is funded by the state's taxpayers that raises questions about the political nature of his flight. And his co- that's fucking such bullshit. Anyway, so there we go. So... There's your runners and riders. There's an article. There's an article there on the New York Times, and it'll burn a mind whenever you read it. Uh, Marianne Williamson. That's the one that we didn't. She's her campaign is currently imploding. Uh, Marianne Will- Williamson is a self-help author and former spiritual advisor to Oprah Winfrey, and she's running for a second time. Her her campaign at, as at the time of this podcast is going under. It does. It's very helpful there. It says. Gives you their age. 80, 
Joseph Biden, 82 years old on inauguration day next year. Marianne Williamson, 72. Robert F. Kennedy, 71. Now, I will say this. Robert F. Kennedy is a very young 71. Very young. Very fit guy. There's been... You see photographs of him sometimes with his top off, working out. I wish I was cut like that. He's actually cut at 72. 71 right now. Donald J. Trump, 78. Nikki Haley, 53. That's not old at all. Uh, so on and so forth. So there you go. The Republican side has a little bit more youth in its ranks than the Democrats. Very much so. And then to the third party, Cornell, Cornell West. Fuck, I love this guy. And I love, I always, he, he's fantastic. I really, really like him. And I'm going to play you. I'm going to play his announcement video. Now, I will say this before we show you it. When he announced, he announced for a, a third party called the People's Party. Since he's announced, he's changed his uh, affiliation to the Green Party. couple of reasons for that. The People's Party don't have what's called ballot access, which means they can't literally cannot get on the ballot. The two-party system that they have in the US is so uh, incestuous and corrupt that it's very difficult to actually get on the ballot. You can't just announce, go and announce, pay a thousand dollars and say, right, that's me on the ballot, like you can in most places. It's very complicated and it the you will end up you end up going to court a lot and getting sued a lot and uh, all that sort of stuff. So the People's Party was always going to be difficult, and as soon as Cornell West announced, all the people of the, the on the left who were delighted to see him announce because he is very popular, all said the same thing: Why did he not go for the Green Party? And then shortly afterwards, he announced he was going to go for the he was going to run with the Green Party. The People's Party have other issues internally as well. So here is his announcement video. Check this out. This is style. Let me just press play. In these bleak times. I have decided to run for truth and justice, which takes the form of running for president of the United States as a candidate for the People's Party. I Check enter into music. quest for truth. I enter into quest for justice. And the presidency is just one vehicle to pursue that truth and justice, what I've been trying to do all of my life. Boom. I come from a tradition where I care about you. I care about the quality of your life. I care about whether you have access to a job with a living wage, decent housing, women having control over their bodies, health care for all, the escalating, the destruction of the planet the destruction of American democracy. Democracy creates disruption. It creates an eruption. It creates an interruption. Wide from below, the energies of everyday people is manifest. And I know there are precious people in your life who you care for. That's why it's important for you to be involved, important for you to participate. We're not talking about hating anybody. We're talking about loving. We're talking about affirming. We're talking about empowering those who have been pushed to the margins because neither political party wants to tell the truth about Wall Street, about Ukraine, about the Pentagon, about big tech. Neo-fascists like Brother Trump or milquetoast neoliberals like Brother Biden. Wow, well, I'm so okay. happy to make a world-shaking decision. You know what I mean? <laughs> Well, I know gangsters when I see them. <laughs> and gangster is not a subjective expression. It's an objective condition. Mm. Do we have what it takes? We shall see. But some of us are going to go down fighting 
go down swinging with style and a smile, accenting the best in you and trying to tease out the best in me. Let's do it together. Boom. Yes. Check out that music. I would vote for anybody that uses that music for anything. And that's the truth. Um, isn't that brilliant? So Cornell West. Cornell West is a Christian leftist radical coming off the backs of the, the, the black evangelical radical tradition. Oh, you know, the, the Martin Luther Kings and the the Malcolm, oh no, Malcolm X wasn't a Christian, but you get my point. That and the, right into the Black Panthers, and, on, and they were they, they were non affiliated. And actually, uh, they, they weren't religious. But Cornell West was around with the Black Panthers, and the reason he didn't join was because of their um, atheistic uh, beliefs. And he was a, a Christian, and he didn't join the Black. But though he did work with them quite closely, he knew all those guys, and uh, so he's good. And now. The, this is where he's a danger because people know who he is. He's he's the real deal. All those news shows the on MSNBC and CNN and all the newspapers and everything, he's been on them as a guest. He's been a talking head on those things for years. So they know who he is and he's got a great presentation and he is a genuine threat. I think. Now, you know the way they've introduced this thing in, 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 into our elections? This American thing of debates, television debates, which I never remember that being a thing, but that's become a thing this past decade or more. Now, so Biden is dodging those. Now, they're not going to let... So the, all the main candidates, the television companies set up a debate and they... In, they invite the main runners and riders and they put them out in a semicircle and they ask them all these diff difficult questions. It is not that. It's what it's supposed to be. It used to be run by a thing called the League of Women Voters in America, I think. And then it got took over by uh, the DNC itself and then it gets farmed out to CNN and it's just bullshit now. But nonetheless, it is an opportunity for... Other candidates, other than the main candidates, to get their faces into the living rooms of the of of Middle America, as they would call it, and it would be a good thing for the likes of Cornell West and RFK to do, to be a part of. But it doesn't. Biden can't obviously be a part of that because he would get fucking crucified. He would wander off in the middle of it. He's he's and he's getting worse. Um. I really don't see how he would survive that. So I understand why the Democrats don't want to have those debates. But as West himself and RFK have said, they're focusing on going on to the main, the, 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 the outsider media. So the Joe Rogan podcast and the Jimmy Dore show and, you know, all these, there's all these other avenues and ways of getting your message out to the people but i would say it's a bit of a problem because if you're going to rely you, you can't you can't rely solely on the likes of lefty media lefty alternative media because those people know who you are you know already they, they know they, they, they got you you know um so yeah so there you go so uh just on this um on Cornell West. Uh, Cornell, this is from the New York Times article. Cornell West has taught at Yale, Princeton, and Harvard and is currently a professor of philosophy at Union Theological Seminary. He walked away from Harvard actually because he, this is a few years, a couple of years ago, because he was, he should have got tenure, but because of his radical, what's considered radical political beliefs, and he, he criticizing Barack Obama and things like that. He never got it. So he just said, fuck you, and he walked away. He wouldn't be held a ransom. So he is known for his progressive activism, including, there you go, his sharp criticism of former President Barack Obama. 
Dr. West initially said he would run with the People's Party, led a third party led by former campaign staff man- member for Bernie Sanders, but he sub- has sub- subsequently said he would seek the Green Party's nomination instead. And that's all correct. So there we go. Um, isn't that interesting? So I think that the American election 2024 is going to be, it's going to get mean. And what it means for the rest of us is that for incumbents, no matter where, whatever country, war is good. So if an incumbent has a foreign war to focus on, it's good for them because people don't want to vote against, uh, uh, they, don't, they don't want to their vote to be seen as something undermining their country. So that's one of the sad realities of electoral politics. Um, but for me, um, I'm just going to make a wee prediction at the minute. Uh, Biden will be will drop out. He, he can't be elected. He can't, he's clearly not well. He, and he's getting worse. And there's a lot of stuff going on. He's being impeached and the, and then the, the stuff with the Hunter Biden and all. There's more and more stuff coming out all the time with their links to Ukraine, etc., etc. And it's murky as hell and corrupt as hell. So there's that. So I think he'll drop out and he'll be replaced by the governor of California, I think, who, again, uh. his name escapes me, can't remember. Um, I think on the Republican side that Trump is being impeached right now. Uh, that is being, or not, he, he's being prosecuted. That is a tactic being used by the Democrats and the establishment to try and tip, pull him out of the race. I don't know if it'll work. It might. Um, but he certainly said that it, it won't stop him. If he goes, his main contender is... Uh, Ron DeSantis. Um, let me show. I just should have that up on the screen for you, actually. Where is it? There. Ron DeSantis. So if Trump goes, it's Ron DeSantis. If Trump stays, it's Trump. All the way. He still got it. He he can he could crucify all of these people. He's an outsider. He runs in the Republicans just as a flag of convenience. And that's not. I, mean, I you don't don't get me please. And, and I will say this: I am not a Trump fan. He's a dick. But if it comes to the two, if you give me a choice between any establishment Democrat or Donald Trump, I will take Donald Trump. And again, this has been a part of my political journey as well. Five years ago, I wouldn't have said that. I thought Trump was the biggest monster that ever lived. I didn't get it either. And he is a monster. He's just not as bad, as big as a monster as them. And then this comes down to exactly what it was started this podcast with. The illusion of choice. The illusion of choice. The best thing you're ever going to get is the least worst. Both. Whenever you've got a, a political system that's so completely captured by establishment interests and corporate and capitalist interests... All you'll ever get to do is vote for the least worst. And in this instance, between Trump and Biden, Trump is clearly the least worst. Demonstrably the least worst. Demonstrably the least worst. Clearly, easily the least worst. Still a dick, still a monster, but the least worst. We wouldn't be at war. I don't think we'd be at war in Ukraine right now. And I say we, not me, not you. NATO. And it is a NATO war being led by the US. But if Trump drops out, the main guy is going to be DeSantis. So when ba- the governor... Of Ke- I'm going to just have to Google this because it's driving me fucking mental. Governor of California. Sorry, I'm going to find this out right now. Gavin Newsom. There we go. So that's who he is. Gavin Newsom. There's a picture of him on the screen. He looks like he's going to run for election, doesn't he? So if, when Biden drops out, the governor of California, Gavin Newsom, will be parachuted in. Uh, if Trump survives, it's Trump. If he doesn't, it's DeSantis, the governor of Florida. And the third party candidate is Cornel West, who can do damage. 
he can do damage. He, he's in on the Green Party. Jill Stein, the former Green Party presidential candidate, is now on his, his team. She's now going to be running his campaign. She is highly credible. He is highly credible. Chris Hedges is my favourite person in the world, is one of his uh, advisors and is, is caucusing for him. They're very close friends. Um, uh, so he has a good shot. He actually does have a very good shot, especially if Biden is the choice. And then, in the, as, I said, as it says there on the screen, other Republicans consider in a run. Rick Scott, I think he's something to do with governor of Florida or something for Florida anyway. Um, and he is another heavyweight if he goes into the fight. So the Republican Party, is, the Republican field is, is getting jammed up there. So there we go. So that's, yeah, so that's that. So I just wanted to show you this. Now, th this is a guy called, uh, m on Twitter, he's called Midwest Marxist. I think he's great. He's one of the u the new young Marxist socialist. Uh, this the, the the of American youth that has come up this past number of years. Um, it's like, what did you think was going to happen if you took everything off the table? If you took all the meat off the bone, all the food off the plate, and left these youngsters with nothing? Where did you think they were going to turn to? We know who they turned to. They turned to Carl. So check out what he's got to say about... Because people are saying Cornell West needs to pull out, needs to drop out now because he'd be taking votes away from Biden, which will just open the, the door for Trump. They use Trump as the bogeyman, the monster that's Trump. So this guy's got a, he's going to flip it. He's going to flip it. It's good. Check it out. Many liberals are saying that Dr. Cornell West should not run for president in the 2024 election because he's going to take votes from Biden, therefore helping Donald Trump. And what they fail to realize is that Trump's victory over Hillary Clinton in 2016 shows us that we can't trust neoliberal Democrats to defeat Trump. And especially if Trump hammers his populist pro-working class talking points, like I'm going to bring jobs back and end the wars. Meanwhile, Biden's trying to send another 70 billion to Ukraine while our infrastructure crumbles at home. And the only way to counter that is with a left-wing candidate like Cornell West who actually does want to end the wars and bring jobs back. Invest all the money we're using on wars abroad into our own country. And that's why Joe Biden should drop out of the 2024 election and stop stealing votes from Cornell West. The longer that Biden runs, the more he's helping Trump. He should drop out and endorse Cornell West now. And any registered Democrat should leave the party to vote for Cornell West as well. If you don't, you're helping Trump. Many... <laughs> This guy's smart. He's a smart kid. I've watched him. I've watched him talking. He's good. He knows his shit. He knows his theory as well. He knows all his Marxist theory and his socialist theory. All his Gramsci and Marx and all that. He really knows his shit. But I love his... He's, he's got cojones. He's got cojones. He loves it. I love that. He's a, You know, because... Uh, yeah, oh, Cornell West should pull out because he should pull out. Because he's just going to open the door for Trump. He says, well, we know that establishment neoliberal Democrats can't beat Trump because they've tried. So, there we go. So, there we go. That's the show. That's the episode. That's the pod. What do you think? Are we okay? Are we all good? Uh, like, share, subscribe. Twitter, Patreon, Instagram. Patreon tier, one tier only. One pound a month, that's all it is. And again, once again, I thank you for your patience. Um, I was glad I was able to get out and do this for you today. Uh, yeah. And um, mm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be talking a bit more about this sort of stuff uh, as we go forward, leaning directly into my reading of the establishment and what it means, how it's building, how it's built, how it works, what it means for us as working class people. 
And the reason, I mean, I do, I do follow American politics quite closely. I actually follow American politics just as close as I follow politics here. But I don't talk about politics here because it's a waste of fucking time. It really, it's just, it is literally just a waste of time for me because nothing happens. So um, I'm going to actually, do you know what? Yeah. I'm going to finish with a Cornell West video. We're just going to just let that rip because that music is just brilliant, isn't it? Just love it. Anybody that can just be that cool. If I was in America, I would vote for Cornell West. That is without a doubt. 100% get my vote every day actually if I was in America I would go and work for this man I would be knocking doors for this guy so there you go that's what I think of him so thanks everybody uh, take care and we'll see you at the next one in these bleak times <laughs> I have decided to run for truth and justice, which takes the form of running for president of the United States as a candidate for the People's Party. I enter in the quest for truth. I enter in the quest for justice. And the presidency is just one vehicle to pursue that truth and justice, what I've been trying to do all of my life. I come from a tradition where I care about you. I care about the quality of your life. I care about whether you have access to a job with a living wage, decent housing, women having control over their bodies, health care for all, the escalating, the destruction of the planet, the destruction of American democracy. Democracy creates disruption. It creates an eruption. It creates an interruption. Wide from below, the energies of everyday people is manifest. And I know there are precious people in your life who you care for. That's why it's important for you to be involved, important for you to participate. We're not talking about hating anybody. We're talking about loving. We're talking about affirming. We're talking about empowering those who have been pushed to the margins because neither political party wants to tell the truth about Wall Street, about Ukraine, about the Pentagon, about big tech. Neo-fascists like Brother Trump or milquetoast neoliberals like Brother Biden. Wow, well, I'm so okay. happy to make a world-shaking decision. You know what I mean? <laughs> Well, I know gangsters when I see them. <laughs> and gangster is not a subjective expression. It's an objective condition. Mm. Do we have what it takes? We shall see. But some of us are going to go down fighting, go down swinging with style and a smile, accenting the best in you and trying to tease out the best in me. Let's do it together. <laughs>